Good morning and welcome to our online service. This is the first Sunday in Advent. Let us be focused on celebrating the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you draw closer to God through your personal prayer, your time in study and worship. May you experience Christmas with great expectations. We are the body of Christ and together we come to worship an amazing God. Let's worship and give praise to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Advent is a time of reflection and renewal. God of light, shine in our hearts and renew our hope. Advent is a time of self-examination. God of light, shine in our hearts and strengthen our resolve. Advent is a time of joyful expectation. God of light, shine in our hearts and renew our faith. Advent is a time of service and searching. God, God of, of light, light, shine in our hearts and, and ignite, ignite our, our compassion. compassion. Today we light the first candle, the candle of hope, reminding us that in sending Christ, God sent hope to the earth. Hope for a world free from war and pain, hope for a sense of purpose and belonging, and hope for peace and prosperity for our children and our children's children. When Christ came, he brought us the light of lights light that fills us with hope, illuminates our lives, and shines in our hearts. Please join me in the opening prayer. God of light, we pray today that you will fill us with hopeful expectation and that you will cause us to become your children of light. Help us to spread your light into the world around us Help us to recognize our opportunities to brighten the lives of others. 
Help us to live each day as beacons of love, filled with joy, peace, and hope. Amen. The opening hymn this morning is Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. lesson this morning is Malachi 3 verse 1. Malachi is indeed the last book of the Old Testament written by the prophet Malachi. The word Malachi means his messenger or messenger of God. As we enter this season of Advent, this passage reminds me that we are indeed waiting for his messenger the birth of Jesus. Verse 1 says, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple, the messenger of the covenant, who you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you for your generosity and faithful giving. Your giving continues to help us to work with others in our communities and to provide for those in need. We are blessed and it's because of you to continue to support our missionaries and continue to proclaim the good news. Let us recognize our Lord and Savior with joy in our hearts. As the Lord speaks to your heart today, we ask that you consider mailing your gifts, your tithes, and your offerings so that we're able to continue to be the hands and feet of Christ in our local community, nation, and around the world.
gracious and heavenly Father, bless these gifts as well as the giver. Use these gifts in a bold and mighty way to continue to grow your kingdom. We lift them up before thee in Jesus' precious name. Amen. reading from the gospel this morning is taken from the gospel of Luke chapter 1 verses 8 through 13 and verse 17. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. 
Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Gracious and Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with open hearts. We ask that you equip us and empower us. Lord, in all that we do, we ask that you receive the honor, glory, and praise as we lift this up before you. We pray this now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. This is the first week of a four-week series titled, Hark! The Herald Angels Sing. The four-week Christmas series walks through the angelic messages foretelling how Jesus' birth would fulfill God's promise of hope to the entire world. Can you believe that Advent season is here? You know, it's time to prepare ourselves and to celebrate the nativity of Christ's birth and return of Christ at the second coming. John 1.14 tells us that the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son. I want us to listen to these words of theologian Karl Barth and what the essence of Advent is all about. Listen to these words. Unfulfilled and fulfilled promises are related to each other, as are dawn and sunrise. Both are promise and in fact, the same promise. If anywhere at all, then it is precisely in the light of the coming of Christ that faith has become Advent faith, the expectation of future revelation but faith knows for whom and for what it is waiting. It is fulfilled faith because it lays hold on the fulfilled promise, the promise for Israel and the promise for the church is Jesus Christ. He has come and he will come again. So in our message today, we will see that even when it feels like God is far off. We can trust that he is working because he is faithful to his word. You know, sometimes we make mistakes. And when we make mistakes in our lives, and because of this, we may feel like, well, God has it out for us. Have you ever felt that way? But his discipline towards us is truly a sign that he loves us and isn't giving up on us. So our challenge is this, will we trust that God has our best interest at heart? I want us to take a look at our first angelic message foretelling how Jesus' birth would fulfill God's promise of hope to the entire world. Our story is of Zachariah and Elizabeth. And this can be found in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 5 through 80. So, who
Who are Zechariah and Elizabeth? Well, Zechariah was a priest in the temple during the Roman reign of King Herod. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron's priestly line. In Luke chapter 1 verse 6, it states that both of them were righteous before God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and statutes of the Lord. This is important because their righteousness standing before God is noteworthy because they remained, well, childless until they were well advanced in years. During the first century, barrenness or childlessness had been seen as a consequence of, well, personal unrighteousness. So Luke chapter one, verse six, declares that Elizabeth's barrenness without child was not due to sin, but rather due to God's plan to accomplish his purpose. At this late stage in their lives, during, well, Zachariah's priestly divisions rotation of duties in the temple, he was chosen, chosen by lot to enter into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. To be chosen by lot to enter into the temple of the Lord may only happen once in a lifetime. So God had a plan. He had a plan for Zechariah. And as Proverbs 16, 33 states, the lot is cast into the lap, but it's every decision is from the Lord. So up to this point in the story, well, everything seemed to be, well, somewhat normal. It had been over 400 years since the prophet Malachi's prophetic foretelling of sending a messenger who will prepare the way for the Lord. This unfulfilled promise given to Malachi is now going to be fulfilled. So while Zechariah was in the temple, well, placing the incense, Gabriel, an angel of the Lord, appeared with a message for him. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son whom you are to call him John. Okay, all right, everyone, take a deep breath. How many of you said up to this point, didn't see that coming? Have any of you ever experienced a conversation with an angel? The angel Gabriel had more to say to Zachariah about this child. He announced the child would be great in the sight of the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit from birth. Their son would turn many people's hearts to God in preparation for the Messiah and the spirit and power of Elijah. You know, as I reread this story, my heart was truly warmed and I was filled with joy for Zachariah and Elizabeth. You know, thinking how much joy and, and gratitude that Zachariah must have felt at that very moment, hearing the good news. Then I remembered something. I remembered what Zachariah truly felt, and it's found right here in the story. Zachariah didn't believe the angel, or he doubted. This is what he stated. How can I be sure of this? Because I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. Well, the angel Gabriel rebuked or essentially disciplined Zachariah for, well, his unbelief. And he declared this, you will be silent and unable to speak until the day that these things take place. When Zechariah had come out of the holy place to where the people, you know, were waiting for him to pronounce this blessing, he was indeed unable to speak. 
So through signs and hand gestures, I can only imagine this, the people actually understood that he had seen a vision. When his time of service concluded, Zechariah returned to his wife to a town in the hill country of Judah. There, his wife conceived just as the angel had said. You know, Elizabeth immediately recognized God's role in her pregnancy by saying these words. Thus the Lord has done for me in these days. He has shown his favor and taken away my disgrace amongst the people. She kept to herself in seclusion for five months, seemingly focusing on praising God, praising God for the unborn child within her. So are we prepared for God or will we doubt like Zechariah did? Will we be humble before the God? Will we follow in his path or opt to go our own way? Will we trust that God has our best interest at heart? Well, what does the story, what does this, this angelic story tell us? That God is faithful and he will bring his promises because all of his promises will come to pass. What God promises, he will perform. Only he will do it, you ready? In his time. And sometimes in surprising ways. When that time does come, we will realize that God's timing was much, much better than our own. God is gracious, gracious in mysterious ways. Sometimes we are deprived of something because God has something better waiting for us down the road. It's when we patiently, patiently wait on the Lord and we often find that God gives us more than we imagine possible. You know, Zachariah and Elizabeth, they prayed for a child. Their prayer was unanswered for many years, but they did not stop praying. They did not stop praising or serving the Lord. They waited upon the Lord for his timing. And what they got was so much more. Do you have unanswered prayers? You know, God loves us in our good and not so good times. God may feel well far off, but we can trust him because he is faithful to his word. Let's wait upon the Lord, praying, praising, and serving the Lord. God's timing, though different from ours, is infinitely wiser. So what will this Advent mean to you and your family? My prayer is that each day you are drawn closer to God through your personal prayer time, your study time, and worship. May you experience Christmas with great expectations. Reach out to others. What a great example. Reaching out to others, sharing the love of Christ this Advent season with family and with friends. Will you join me in prayer? Let's pray. Lord, help us to know that your timing is wise. Give us rest when we need rest, strength and courage to do what is best and an open heart to share your love with others throughout our church, community, and around the world. May we thank you for unanswered prayers, knowing that your timing, though different from ours, is infinitely wiser. Amen. You know, each week we invite you to accept the free gift, free gift of Jesus Christ. We also invite those who feel in their hearts to reaffirm their faith. You know, God sent his one and only son, Jesus Christ, to die on a cross for all of our sins. 
After three days in the tomb, Jesus rose from the dead and declared victory over death. If you believe this and have accepted this through faith in your heart, this is God's invitation for you today. This is his gift to all. If you're drawn by the Holy Spirit and are ready to accept this gift, I ask that you join with me now in prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive me. I turn towards you so I may be whole. I accept this free gift of Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Amen. If you have accepted this free gift, praise God. Let someone know, let us know, so that we may be able to give you resources and walk with you, journey with you, as you continue in your faith journey. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Lord, in a season when every heart should be happy and light, many of us are struggling with the heaviness of life, burdens that steal the joy right out of our hearts. Lord, we need your peace. We confess that our hearts are too often filled with wonder of a different kind, wondering when the bills will be paid, when this virus will end, when rest will come. In a world where worry, not peace, prevails, stir up that good news again. This Advent, make it real in our hearts. Never have we needed your joy and peace more than now. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, our Emmanuel, the Word made flesh. Lord, we lift up to you now our spoken prayers as we pray for Larry and Shari. We pray for Lorraine, pray for Rick and Joni. We lift up Betty, Chuck, Jed, Sue, Norman, Jordan, Guy. We lift up Glory and Ben. We lift up Catherine and Lori, Lenora, Keith, Joyce, and Devin. Lord, we pray for Rich and Joanne. We lift up Sharon and Regina. Lord, we lift up Paula. Lord, you know what they need. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, now we bring to you our unspoken prayers. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord, we pray for our nation. We ask, Lord, that you heal our land. Lord, we continue to pray for an end to this virus and that you will heal the world in its grips. We continue to pray for all those who have lost loved ones to this disease. May you bring them comfort. We ask, Lord, that you strengthen and heal those who are currently battling this virus. Lord, we pray for our first responders, those essential workers. Lord, we pray for our military. We ask for a, a hedge of protection around them all and their families. Lord, we pray for all the students on Thanksgiving break. We pray for the parents, teachers, administrators, and all those school bus drivers. Lord, we lift them up before thee and ask for thy hedge of protection around them. Lord, we pray for Chickie's Church and the many churches in our local community and throughout the world. May your light shine through the church. Lord, we praise you and we thank you for all you have done and ask for these things in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our worship service is over. His service begins. Take care and God bless.